got the NMR question here from the F324 June 15 paper. This one caused quite the stir. So if I go through the question and then you have a go at answering it and then I'll go through the answers. So we're told a student reacts compound K, this one here, with these unknown R groups with 2,4-DNP and it makes the orange precipitate as we're told in our lessons and water. Student purifies the orange precipitate L, sends a sample for analysis using proton and carbon-13 NMR spectroscopy. We've got to describe a use for NMR in medicine. State the region of the electromagnetic spectrum used in proton NMR spectroscopy. Explain why this CdCl3 is used as a solvent in proton NMR spectroscopy. And now we've got the first of our spectra. We've got the carbon-13 spectrum of L. So how many different carbon environments are present in a molecule of compound L? And now the big part of the question. So the reaction of K to L is repeated below, so you don't have to keep looking over the other side of the page. And here's its proton NMR spectrum. Here's your answer to C, that's the carbon-13 NMR, and the data given to identify these R1 and R2 groups. And ultimately, we've got to draw the whole structure of this thing. But just bear in mind, we know there's a proton there, so we know about that, and there's some protons in this benzene ring as well. So we've got to explain how we use the chemical shifts and splitting patterns in the proton NMR spectrum and any evidence from carbon-13. And we're also told that this HC to C to double bond N would give a peak in this range here, delta 1.6 to 2.2. Well, there's only one peak in that region and it's that one there. So in the answer, you've got to use the appropriate technical terms spelt correctly. And you've got all that space, and you've got to come up with the structure for compound L. And then the final part, draw the structure of compound K. So part A... A use for NMR spectroscopy in medicine is MRI scanning, so that's magnetic resonance imagery scanning. The region of the electromagnetic spectrum used is the radio wave section. Why is CdCl3 used as a solvent in proton NMR spectroscopy? Well, it doesn't have any protons. The only proton it had has been replaced with the deuterium isotope, that's hydrogen 2, the mass number of 2. It doesn't have a spin and so it doesn't give a signal that would interfere with the spectrum. The carbon-13 spectrum, all you had to do was count the peaks. There's 14 peaks and so there are 14 carbon environments. Now that's going to have to feature in the part D. So we will need to refer back to that. So the big question now. You can see in red here, I've just written down on top of the peaks what kind of proton environment would cause these peaks. Now, it's always a good idea to do this because it's nice and easy to do and the examiner may credit this, but at least it's given you something to start with. So you can see that this messy signal here is due to this proton environment, so hydrogen bonded directly to a benzene ring, which you can see you've got in the given part, the bit that you know about for L. So we can see there's one, two, three of those. Now, this seven here, and I'll come on to this in a bit, this seven means that there are seven of these protons well, there's only three in this bit, so there must be 
four more of these in one of these R groups. Therefore, there must be another benzene ring in this compound. We've got an NH. Well, there's an NH there. We've got a hydrogen bonded to a carbon, bonded to a benzene ring environment. Now, we haven't got that in the given bit. So, again, must be in one of these R groups. Here's the one that told us about H to C to C double bond N. Well, there's your C double bond N there. So, one of these carbons here, the hydrogen directly attached to one of those carbons is this environment here. And the final environment, R to C to H, but we haven't got that in the given bit. So that, again, must feature in one of these R groups. So this is all processing we can do before we actually jump into the actual structure, coming up with the structure. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to take each peak in turn and I'm just going to say what does the area tell us and what does the splitting pattern tell us. And you'll get marks for this. And in fact, there's seven marks going for this part of the question. Five of them are for what I'm going to do now. So, the signal at delta 0.8, it's that one there, is due to an RCH environment. We've already said that with our little annotation there. It's a triplet. Make sure that's spelt right. Therefore, the protons giving this signal are adjacent to a CH2 group. The signal itself has an area of 3, and so the protons causing the signal must be in a CH3 group. So that's telling us we must have a CH3 bonded to a CH2. The signal at delta 1.8, so remember that's the one they told us about, is due to the H to C, this um, C double bond N environment. Now, they're not going to give us a mark for that because they've already told us it. It's a singlet, therefore there are no adjacent hydrogens. It's got an area of three, so therefore it must be this this must feature in our molecule. So if you look at that, then that must, there's one of our R groups sorted already because it's here. So one of the R groups within a matter of a couple of minutes has already been established. It's a CH3 group. Signal at delta 2.4 is due to a benzene ring with CH attached. So it's this environment here, this hydrogen here. It's a quartet, so it must be adjacent to a CH3. So these hydrogens here adjacent to a CH3. It's got an area of two. There must be two in the environment. And so you can see, I've been able to say, well, we must have this feature in our molecule as well. The signal at delta 5.3 is due to an NH environment. A singlet, no adjacent hydrogens, and an area of one, and therefore it's just what we said, it's an NH. And the multiplet between delta 7.1 and 7.5 are due to these benzene hydrogens. Now remember in the bit they already we knew about, there were three in that environment, so that's telling us we must have two benzene rings, or another benzene ring, with four of these hydrogen environments. So, here's the answer. We'll just talk through that. Remember, we knew about these. So these are 7.1 to 7.5, there's three of those. And there's this one here, we knew about that one. So we've already established that one of the R groups is a CH3 group, and then the rest of the other R group is this benzene ring with this ethyl group attached. You can see I've put all the shift values on the protons. We just have a look at what I've said here, and this enables us to tie in the carbon 13 NMR. 
it must be one for die substituted. So what I mean by that is this ethyl group must be position four compared to that one. And so why is that? It's because we need that to be 14 carbon environments in this molecule. So if we just count up what we've got, one, two, three, equivalent four, equivalent five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So if we'd put that ethyl group on any other of these carbons, we wouldn't get 14 environments. And then the last part of the question is basically just compound L. It's obviously the ketone that's reacted with the 2,4-DNP, and it's just got to have those R groups on that you've established. So if you got that right, you are officially a genius. But what I would say is, yes, that was hard, but five of those seven marks were for just saying stuff that's fairly straightforward. So anyway, hopefully that helped.